and the Soviet Union collapsed. And we got the first six Kazakh visas issued in Beijing. And people, when we got to Kazakhstan, were committing suicide, jumping off balconies, shooting each other dead in the streets. It was like an Armageddon, the suffering. Thank you for taking me up. I'm living life on a merry-go-round And you can't find a fighter But I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out We're gonna walk it out and move. Hi Greg and Taya. My name is Delwyn. I'm a part of the Global Care Project team at AG World Missions in Melbourne. You know, it was great to hear the other day the wonderful news of your willingness to underwrite the project in Kazakhstan called Operation Heat. As a result, we spoke to our missionaries Doug and Anna Boyle, who are at the Teen Challenge Centre, and we related the news to them. And they want to express to you their thankfulness and their appreciation of your wonderful gift. Uh, very shortly the temperatures in Kazakhstan will drop to 30 degrees below zero uh, and there's such difficult conditions to live in. Uh, and now it's just great to know that these women uh, very shortly won't have to face these very difficult conditions. So we just want to thank you so much for that. <laughs> Today we have two fair Dinkum Aussie heroes of the faith, missionaries Doug and Anna Boyle. Through drug rehabilitation centres and education, they have impacted the lives of thousands across Kazakhstan and beyond. As you'll hear, they have been through so much. And the Soviet Union collapsed. And we got the first six Kazakh visas issued in Beijing. Many of the former underground pastors emigrated to Western countries. You know, they suffered so much. They were just, you know, so glad to be able to get out. So we, we've lived and raised our children in that and learned about the Soviet culture and all the suffering of the Soviet people under the Tsars and all the abuse. And, and uh, they're really abused people. Youngest son was kidnapped, I was stabbed, we were robbed about 20 times. It was so brutal. It was brutal. And people, when we got to Kazakhstan, were committing suicide, jumping off balconies, shooting each other dead in the streets. Just to walk to the little bazaar to buy vegetables, you'd find all these old people just lying in the street, drunk, covered in sores. It was unbelievable. And anyone who's gone through that time, Karen, it was just, it was like an Armageddon, the suffering. And then within 10 years of the collapse of the Soviet Union, or five years, Afghanistan heroin production had increased to 5,000 metric tonnes. And Al Mahdi, Kazakhstan, was this major trafficking route. I mean, the heroin was going in unaccompanied suitcases on British Air, Lufthansa and KLM, 20 kilograms. So, you know, that's the level of corruption we're talking about in the society. So they had a drug addiction problem. There wasn't a family in the country that didn't have a drug addict. But then I was approached to start a narcotics mission by an American doctor who knew that I was a graduate from the Teen Challenge program. I graduated from the Teen Challenge program in Australia in 1975, but I'd been a minister. You know, my kids knew nothing about that past. So I agreed to take it on for one year in 95. Well, next year we celebrate 20 years of Teen Challenge in Kazakhstan. It grew to be possibly, arguably, the largest program in the world with about 17 men's and women's children's rehabilitation centres, a school which Anna pioneered for street kids and she's still the director, kindergarten, and the church which we set up really for the families and which, you know, as I said before, we ended up planning about 80 churches out of. We have graduates in Russia, in Israel, in China, in North America, in Europe, all running ministries. And they were drug addicts and prostitutes. It's been amazing. Yet people never believe that a heroin addict could be set free 
when I stood up and talked to the parents that I had been a drug addict, that I went through the Teen Challenge program, they did not believe me. Now these are people who don't believe in God. They don't believe that Jesus can take away your sins, that you can be forgiven and that you can forgive yourself. So, but we started the program. We took five men and five women in the first year and they graduated, all of them, and then seven of them stayed on as workers. Six of them are ordained pastors today and we doubled every year for almost 10 years until we grew to be one of the largest. And we were the first Christian drug rehab in the former Soviet Union. Now, did others come and join you to support you as human resource? No, not really. No, it was a pretty difficult place. It was really the the fruit of the rehab ministry that built the disciples, you know. Yeah, people came from Australia, but some lasted two, five, seven years. You know, missionaries don't last very long today. But we appreciate the people that came. A lot of people came to teach English, and that was the key, and they'd come for a year, and that really contributed. We taught English in the programs. English was really the job creation or the vocational training in the rehab centres. And uh, those people really contributed a great amount, not only their teaching and help for our graduates. So many of our graduates, one is, you know, a leader in the IOC. He's an English speaker. You know, I mean, they have great positions in the society now because of those volunteer Aussies that came to teach them. Aussie English, it's so funny to hear them speak and the Americans can't understand them because of their Aussie English. We were based in Kazakhstan until two years ago. And uh, we received a letter from the prosecutor's office that we couldn't preach or pray or read the Bible in public. We pastored one church there for 17 years, a mother church, and we planted about 80 churches out of that. Once again, Greg and Tay, I want to thank you for your support. We look forward to uh, talking with you about the progress of the uh, project in Kazakhstan and hopefully meet you at some stage. So may God bless you as you continue to serve him so faithfully. The work in Kazakhstan is all autonomous, self-financing, self-governing. Um, we have about 90 to 100 people still there, our own people in full-time ministry. Um, the work in China, the old um, Muller who led the work, he passed away last year but he planted 40 churches. So if you were involved in the Uyghur Bible Project, that Bible enabled him to do that yeah, work. Yeah. Um, the school, the only official role, Anna still runs the school, which has got 36 teachers, it's not a small school, and the kindergarten. So she goes there four or five times a year. I'm kind of persona non grata. I got a letter from the KGB saying, can't preach, can't read the Bible, can't pray in public. So I have to be more careful. I, I go once a year, that's all. I bring the Kazakhs to Georgia, where we've been now eight years. Um, we, we took Kazakh missionaries there, our own converts. Half of them had been drug addicts, the other half had been normal, like Lane <laughs> and Fred. <laughs> We're not sure which half are the best half. But, no, no. Um, and what so, are, what's Teen Challenge doing? So Teen, in, Teen Challenge still has like nine drug rehab centres in Kazakhstan. And in Georgia we have a men's drug rehab um, in the capital city, Belisi, and a church. And that's pastored by Kazakhs, and the drug rehab is run by Georgians now. We have our own Georgian disciples, yes, yeah. and they've started a women's centre on the coast in Batumi, in the mountains. And uh, we'll have girls coming in there this year, mostly being sex trafficked. That's the major holiday place for Muslims from Syria, Iran, Saudi Arabia. We get 500,000 there in a 14-week period. Wow. It's a lot of them, and they're all open to Jesus because they're not afraid, they're not allowed to learn about him anyway. So we're going to start a church in that city this year and I need 200,000 to buy the building and another 200,000 to finish it and I need 100,000 to finish the women's centre. That's all I need. Half a million bucks. <laughs> and I can go for another 10 years. <laughs> You're a good man, Doug. Thanks. Thank you, Doug. Thanks, Fred. Yeah, well, Great, well, Great to talk. Yeah.